This is the Lockpicking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a vintage Zeiss Econ Model 211D Mortise Lock. Now this lock did make its way to me with its original packaging, and as you can see right on the front it says Made in Western Germany. That dates this lock from some time prior to the 1990 reunification of East and West Germany. However, how long prior to that, I just don't know. These locks are actually still made today, and if you look for them on the internet, they seem to sell for somewhere around $120 each, which is why I was very pleased to find this set of two of them, key to like, on eBay for 25 bucks. So I think it was a heck of a bargain. Let me show you what I got in the package. First, we get two of the locks themselves. We'll be looking at that a bit closer later. We get the striker plates they're designed to be used with, some mounting hardware that has rusted, and then we get six of the cruciform keys. Now these locks have something different about them from every other lock I have ever featured on this channel. And what that is, is the fact that you can insert the key from either side of the lock and it will still work. And let me show you how they managed to do that. We'll start by looking at the key itself. It is of course a cruciform key and three of the blades are bitted with four cuts each and then the last just has a little notch there. However, if we take a closer look at the cuts, we can see that the first two and the last two pins are actually mirror images of each other. And that's the same for the cuts on all three sides. Then we have this notch, and what that does is it controls the depth that the key will go when you insert it in the lock. Looking at the lock itself, what we find at the bottom is no pins and just a solid plate, then two pins on each of the three other sides. So what happens when we insert a key? Let's take a close look. We can see, look how far the key comes out of the lock when it's inserted from that side. And if we take it out and insert it from the other side, you can see it only sticks out a tiny bit. And what that's doing, or what's happening, is that the block that this little notch will stop the key on makes it such that when you insert it from one side, the first two cuts of the key are engaging, and when you insert it from the other side, the last two cuts of the key are engaging. I think it's a really clever way to have a six pin lock that can be opened from either side that will fit entirely inside the door. But what we're gonna do now is see what it takes to pick this lock open. Now, whenever I have a cross lock on this channel, I always get questions about the tools that you can buy from any number of Chinese makers that are designed to open locks like this. And I do have a few of them, and frankly, I've never had a whole lot of luck with them. And certainly, I did not have any luck trying them with this. So we are going to try to single pin pick this. I'm going to insert a wiper insert on the lobe of the keyway that's designed to in to accept the key, the blade of the key with no bidding surfaces. That means I have full access to all six pins. And I'm using a standard hook in 25 thousandths, and I'm just gonna go around trying to set each of the pins. Okay, click out of the first pin on the right side, and click out of the hmm, second pin, but he popped back up. Okay. I think I have both of both of them set. Let's move to the other side. First one is loose. Got to click out of the second and then we just dropped into a false set. So I think we have the two on the right and the two on the left set. Let's go on the top. Nothing on the first pin. Counter rotation on the second pin. Okay, and it looks like we got it open. It only moves a quarter of a turn though, 
And as you can see, that's not enough to fully retract the bolts. So we're gonna have to pick this a second time. Okay, got to click on the first pin on the right side. <clears throat> okay, I think I have both the pins on the right side set. Now for the left side, one, two, went into a false set. And then for the last, nothing on the first, counter rotation on the second, and we have fully retracted the bolts. Okay, so an interesting little pick, looks like one security pin, um, certainly not a difficult pick, though one thing to keep in mind is that you're going to be picking this at depth, probably at least a half inch uh, of door will be between the face of this lock and the face of the door itself. So you will be having to reach in through a tiny little hole to get to those pins. That probably makes picking this a little bit harder. Let me disassemble this to show you what's inside. I don't think we're gonna be able to fully gut this. I opened it up prior to starting this video and, and I'll show you what I ran into. We're gonna remove these two screws. And then we need to remove the face plate right here. And that's just held on with two-sided tape. And you might think that that's a bad thing at first, but all that tape's designed to do is to hold this faceplate to the rest of the lock until this is installed. After that, the screws that go through these two holes hold everything together. So there's our little bits of tape, and we should be able to pull this out now. Okay, one note here. First time I had this apart, had this little detent pop up and hit me in the eye. And I think what that's designed to do there's no real necessity for it, but I think it's just designed to keep everything from rattling around while the lock or while the door is being operated. Now, if we take a look at the opposite side of this, we can see the part of the mechanism that makes everything happen. Once we insert the key, we turn this and it works like a little bit of a, like a little gear. Mm. Come on, let me take the key out. There we go. And then we have this piece up top, and that keeps this from being pushed in either direction once you have this set. And then the other way works very nicely. Now, to get this apart even further, we would have to take this little tail piece, I guess, off of the lock. And this whole piece is the lock body itself. You can see the caps for where they drilled for pinholes here, 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 and here. So to get it apart, we certainly need to remove this. However, if you look very carefully, I'm not sure if it's showing up on camera, those screws are actually filled with some sort of lacquer to keep them from backing out. And I tried to remove one of them, and I ended up damaging the screw just a tiny little bit, so I'm not gonna force any of these. So that is as far as we're going to see. In any case, I'm relatively certain that what we have in here is, is four, I'm sorry, six, six pins, uh, probably five standards and one spool, though there may be other security pins hiding someplace, but they just didn't come into play with the bidding. I'm not, I can never be sure about that without opening up, but that's what I felt. So that's all I have for you on this vintage Zeiss Econ Model 211D mortise lock. If you do have any questions or comments about it, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.